Hi, I'm Lindsay from Shreve Memorial Library and welcome to Art Club. This week we're going to continue our celebration of our One Book, One Parish book, uh, which is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. She also wrote The Night Circus. It's a fantastic book. You should really read it. It's, it's lovely. Last week we did The Bee. So in the novel, um, there's this big underground library and um, there are three ways if you want if you find it and you want to stay there and serve it there are three ways you can do that um, and they are symbolized by a bee a key and a sword the bee is the acolyte we did that last week um, the key is the keeper and the sword is the guardian read the book to find out what those are and what that entails it's a really good book seriously anyway so we're going to do a key today you see you can see two paintings, I mean, two uh, photos of what we're going to do. We're going to kind of combine these photos. The uh, dark pewtery color key um, is the one we're going to draw, but we're going to paint it gold because I still want, I want to keep with the black background and I, pewter, that would just be kind of hard. Um, I chose that one because it reminds me of a key in my great grandmother's house when I was a kid. Anyway, so we're going to do that. It'll be an adventure. What you need, uh, you need a pencil and an eraser or a pencil with an eraser. Uh, you need some paper. I'm using watercolor paper. Um, you need some something to color with. It doesn't need to be paint. It can be crayons. It can be colored pencils. It can be whatever you have. I'm going to paint with gouache today. This is acrylic gouache. Um, it acts a lot like acrylics. Uh, like regular acrylics and you can totally use regular acrylics and get pretty much the same result. The reason I'm using gouache is that gouache has a matte finish and um, acrylic has a kind of sheen to it and I was having glare problems and gouache solves that. Um, I also have paint brushes and water and I need to get out a paper palette because I'm painting. Let's go. Okay, so here's how we're going to draw this super simple key. Um, I am going to do, you know how I do uh, circles usually, the plus sign and then draw around it? I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make an oval. I'm going to find about the middle of the paper and I'm going to make a plus sign. Start it eh, eyeballing it. If you want to be super precise, you can measure. That might be right. And I'm going to draw this. Draw one line. Now when I draw a circle, remember I do the lines the same length. To make an oval, I'm going to draw the lines different lengths. So this one, I want it to be a wide oval, so I'm going to make these, I mean this line, longer. Still going to meet in the middle. Okay. Okay, that might, that might work. We'll find out, won't we? Okay, so I'm going to draw kind of like a line, arky line there. And then I'm just going to join these. And so that way we're only worried about drawing like a quarter of it at, at a time instead of just the whole thing. So I'm just going to continue around here. If I don't like it, I can always erase. Okay, there's my oval. I'll clean it up a little bit. That wasn't too bad. For now, I'm going to leave at least the top and bottom tips of the line because that shows me where the um, midpoint is. So I'm going to leave these here and then they arc up a little bit like that on each one I can go back and erase I'm only really worried about the stuff that's going to paint gold over because depending on what kind of paint you're using it might not be terribly opaque that's kind of the case with gouache so I've got that and now I'm just going to bring this around and I'll actually hit this about there 
and those will help guide it too. Okay, drawing that uh, that that plus sign definitely makes it easier. Um, I'm going to go back and pretty well erase these because that part is going to be gold. I don't want to have to fight it too much. I'll mix some white in and that'll help make it a little bit more opaque. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a 3D key and so we're going to make it look a little 3D. So I'm going to draw a line down like that. Okay, I'm going to kind of mirror this a little bit. But it's only going to go to about here. I'm going to try and really taper it in pretty evenly like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Don't worry about it being perfect. Mine certainly isn't. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing along the bottom, start about here, and I'm just going to mirror the bottom of the key, not worried about where the stem thing comes out yet. There. I just kind of blend those lines in as smoothly as I can. Okay, so there's that. Let's see. Now I'll go erase this little bit. Okay, and I'm going to bring two lines down like that and like that. Okay, and they come down a little bit like that. I'm sure you can see it. Yeah. Oops. <clears throat> Okay, then let's see. Actually, those are a little bit farther apart than I want right there. To use that, so put them in like a millimeter. How does that work? Let's see. Oh, this goes up to the top one. Okay. Now, this has like jumped out just a little bit like that on each side. I'm trying my best to mirror this, okay? And then this comes out down a wee bit like that. And then we kind of have a mushroom shape and I'm just gonna draw the whole thing and then erase it because I think it'll be easier. So, we're gonna make like a little mushroom. It's wider than this bit. Okay, like that. Maybe a half circle-ish. Like that, and then smoothly comes around like that without pointy ends. Okay. So I'm going to blend this into that, just like that, and then erase these extra lines. Okay. Now, this comes down and it's wider, like that. Okay. And then as wide as that part we have, we'll bring it all the way across like that. And then we have the shaft of the key and I'm gonna, well, let's see. Let's decide where we want it to end. Ooh, about here. 
Okay, I'm just gonna draw a short line there and then this starts here and then gets a little bit narrower, just a little. So really we can we'll be okay with just drawing a line kind of down. We don't want it to get too much narrower. And then just mirror that on the other side as best you can. Okay. And then I'm going to erase this and around it. Okay. Now we have the key boxy part. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the box and then draw the bits in. So the first one will say starts about here or so and it comes out to there-ish and then this one comes out evenly. Okay, I'm just going to make this into a rectangle and then I'm going to draw the other rectangles in it. So in the middle there's this one and it comes about to the halfway point here like that okay and this one a little bit smaller about there and then one more right there okay and I'm gonna erase these parts that are holes in this little bit of extra line because I don't want a hard time painting over it. And there's that. Now we're going to make this part look a little bit 3D. And the way we're going to do that is just like draw this little angle down here. And let's just do it right there. Okay, this one kind of slowly comes in like that. And then comes down and angles up. And this one is exactly the same as the last one. Angle. And angle down. And here is our key. We're going to show that the round part is 3D with paint. Um, but really, this is, this is it for the drawing. Um, yeah, so... I will suggest anything that you have where it's yellow, like any extra marks, try and get those pretty well erased just in case your paint isn't entirely opaque so you don't end up having to do a bunch of, um, a bunch of coats. And that should be it. Don't worry about anything that's in the rest of it because, I mean, even really that plus there because that's all going to be painted black. So. Let's get to painting. Speaking of painting black, that's exactly what I'm going to do first. I'm going to get out my black and I'm going to paint this outside bit and this inside bit black and do my best to avoid the key. I have painted the background um, and now what I'm going to do is dry it to make sure I don't have yellow and black blending together where I don't want it to. That should be dry enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the whole thing my yellow. If you have a choice between yellows, use whatever warm yellow you have. Yellow ochre actually is fine. That's an earth tone. We're probably going to use some of that. That's, that's perfectly fine too. Um, and by warm, I just mean kind of goldy, um, as opposed to like lemony, 
Um, so I'm just going to put some of this out and I'm going to use a pretty small brush and paint the key all my yellow. There's the key. If you, like me, were not careful enough and got yellow all up in your black, um, don't worry about it. We will go back and fix that later. Um, but first, we're going to do the rest of the key. So the first thing we can do is do the, the, the kind of flat 3D parts. And the way I'm going to do that first, before I pull out that other yellow, I'm going to see a lot of some okay so blacks tend toward like actual black paint not the ones you mix also those but um usually tend toward either in my experience either like yellow or blue um and a yellow would go well with this i think i'm using mars black and i think mars black is the one that tends toward blue and lamp black is the one that tends toward yellow i forget um, but we're going to find out. I've got this. And here's what I'm going to do. I just want to darken that yellow. Um, yellow ochre would work just fine. But might be easier to yeah, get some of this yellow. So, so less wasteful since I got so much yellow. Mix a little bit of black into it. That's way too much. Okay. That's probably fine. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, let's see, this part here. Is that, a, is that off? That's okay. I can kind of see my pencil marks, but only kind of, and that's okay. We remember what we did here, and I'm just going to paint. Just like that. Same thing on this side. Okay. And I just got my hand in paint. What is new? I'm glad we can fix that so easily. Okay. And so. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Try not to get my hands in paint again. And let's see. Out here. Only going to the shaft of the key. Like that. Same thing on the other side. I'm going to ignore that part that I painted carelessly and that back up there there we go and let's see yeah I need to paint that black okay so we have the other parts too that was about here and Here and same thing right here. Make sure you can see it. Yeah, one really nice thing about the black background where you do it kind of in this order is you can always just go back and fix the black really easy. Um, especially when you're using a pre-mixed black. Okay. So there's that part. Um, for the round part, the way you make a round thing look like round 3d is you decide where your light source is or really anything you you decide where your light source is make that side lighter and make the other side darker okay so I'm gonna say my light source is here just because that's where I tend to make light sources from for some reason so the light is coming from here right so that means this side of the key will be lighter 
and this side will be darker. I already have my dark mix, so I'm going to go ahead before that dries since it's acrylic. This is acrylic gouache. There's a gouache that you can re-wet. This is not it. Okay, and I'm just going to go down the side of the key. Oh, I'll start here like this. That just take the whole thing down and kind of go in a little bit on some places and more than others, like that. And then this I need a whole ridge under here to mark that that comes over, like that, and then the edge of that. Same thing over here. I'm going to do a ridge here. Kind of angles down here to show the shadow under that. And the on the other side, we're going to do, do it light. I want to... Uh, there we go. I just want to show that these are there. I can fix that in a minute. Okay. Now I'm going to just continue down the side of the brush brush the side of the key until I get the bottom. Okay, at the bottom I'm going to do like a bigger thing. It's going to go like that. I really want to paint a little bit more of that black and it kind of arches up there like that. Okay. And you see how I continued this? That shows that this is kind of set back a little bit. And I think I'm going to widen this a little bit. And I think that'll be good for this color. I kind of like how that's turning out. Okay, if, you, if you're having opacity issues, go ahead and touch this one up. Okay. Next. I'm going to get the white out and going to do a lighter version of the yellow. I'm not making a tremendously shiny key because this is an old key, but I'll make a slightly shiny key. Okay, so I'm going to get some white and get some yellow that has a little bit of black in it, which is great. And I'm not just going in with white or anything, just lightening it up some. Okay, we'll go put more highlights in it after this. Just want it lighter. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna pretend my light's here, I'm sure you can see. And so all of the places where you would have A shine. You can do that. That would go across most of the top. You see, I'm not painting the whole thing. I'm just getting like one side and leaving that mid tone. And that probably goes to here or so. Same thing over here. And then I'm going to go down this side, like this, just like I went down the other side. Okay, I'm going to do this, it goes in a little bit, I'm not touching that shadow underneath if I can help it. And this, and then there's a little ridge up here. Okay. Now I'm just going to go down this to the, almost the bottom till right before it, re, it touches this part. Okay, so there's that. I'm also going to do a ridge about like this one. Oops. 
and here a little bit. I might have to smooth it out with black. Good enough. See how this is starting to look 3D? I hope you can see it. Okay. So, let's see. We are going to do the same thing. Hmm. That. Mm, no, I think we're going to leave this part. Okay, so we have the just the light and the shadows, right? I'm bring this over and just make that a little bit smoother. If you need to go over anything a second time to make it more opaque, now is the time. And now we're going to add some parts that we're going to highlight even more. And that's just going to be the direction from where that light is. So I'm going to do that right there. Let's see a bigger stroke here. And I do this right here. Okay. It's going to be a shine there. There's going to be a little shine here. A wee little one here. Okay. I'm just going to go back on places that kind of need some, need some light. Okay. So to make a shine, we're just going to go brighter and brighter. Okay. I'm not just going to go and put some white in it. I'm going to get some white. So you can see it. Okay. And there's a little bit of yellow in it. I'm going to take some of this lighter yellow and mix that up and get a lighter color, but it's still that yellow and it is not white. Okay, I don't want it terribly subtle, but I want it not just like sticking out. Okay, there's that. I'm going to go back here and kind of in the middle of this, I'm just going to put a kind of thick line right there. Okay, and here I'm going to do like a triangle. And then do one more about here that's really small or well, really narrow like that okay now I'm gonna go in I'm gonna get some white same thing next to that only need a tiny bit of this get some of this some white you want almost white at this point, but it's still yellow. When you do a painting and you put a shine or something in there, always reserve your whites and really your blacks for tiny, tiny little points to make them stand out. Um, most, if you look at classical paintings, there's really, unless, you know, it's uh, older classical paintings that are more realistic, there's very, very little white in them. And if something's shiny, it really stands out because there's a little bit of white. So this is not white, this is close. And I'm going to make a smaller mark in this bigger one. Okay, make a smaller mark in this bigger one. And a smaller mark in this bigger one. Okay. And then I'm going to go back with white. Tiny bit plain white. It's right there. Oops, too much water. Try that again. Okay. Tiny bit. Like, we're not putting much white in this. We're just doing like a tiny little line and a dot. And a little tiny bit of a dab, tiny bit of a dab. Okay, and now it's shiny. It is shiny and 3D. Now, what we have to do is, is well, okay, you might not have to, but I have to fix mine. Because I was careless and got yellow paint where, the, where it should be black. There are also, um, I think that's just this paint, some little spots that always end up staying white. 
So I'm going to touch up my black and that'll be very close to it. Okay, my black is touched up um, fairly well. If you do something entirely ridiculous like I did and drop your brush like I did, don't panic. Let it dry and then paint over it. You, you will end up in a world of frustration if you don't let it dry first because then you'll be mixing the paints together and that's not what you wanna do. So I'm gonna make sure this is dry. Okay, since it's painting over black, you might have to do a couple coats. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to get this yellow again, like the original yellow. You see that? It's got the original yellow. I'm going to paint this, the original yellow, and then I'm going to go back and dry it. And then I'm going to go back and paint it the darker color. And that way I don't have to do a bunch of coats, just this, and then that darker color will do. Okay. And nice. Okay, look over your painting, see what you think about it. See if you're happy with it. See still, yeah, a couple little places. Check your, see if there's anywhere else you need to touch it up. I think that's it for mine. Just use plain old more paint right here. Um, and then we're going to sign it. And the way I'm going to sign it, you see, last week I signed this with this gray. And since I happen to have white and black here, I'm just going to mix a gray that's kind of similar to that one. When you get some black, you can sign your name, however, in whatever colors you want. This is just the way I'm doing it. And I'm going to sign my name in this gray. I like how subtle it is down here. Now for the exciting part, I'm going to peel off the tape. We shall see what we have. I really like this. I'm happy with how it turned out. See if you, like me, are using paper and tape, be sure and be very careful pulling up that tape so you don't rip up your paper. Let's see, ooh, the texture of this paper is so weird. That's the way it ends up just about every time, but that's okay on those edges anyway. Got a little paper there, that's okay. And slowly, there we go. Yay! I think this looks awesome. So next week will be week three and the final week of the One Book One Parish uh, art clubs. And next week we will be painting a sword. I'll be using the same colors. So it'll be really similar see wouldn't it be fun to have all three of these and like hang them up next to each other or give them as a gift to somebody who really likes Aaron Morgenstern of the Starless Sea that would be awesome and Christmas is coming up so uh, anyway yeah I hope you enjoyed this if you painted along with me or colored or whatever you did please take a picture of it and send it into the library social media we love to see what you do and yeah I will see you next week for more Art Club. Bye.